All right, so let's now talk about factor by grouping. So today we're just going to talk about it where we have three terms, right, where we have a trinomial. So when we're going to use factor by grouping with a trinomial is when your leading coefficient is anything other than positive 1. So even if it's negative 1, okay, anything other than positive 1 is where you're going to use this. So now this is how it works. You still want to say to yourself, you know, first step in factoring always, can I factor out the greatest common factor? Which, if you look at these three terms, there's nothing to factor out. So instead of coming up with two numbers that add to our middle term and multiply to this last term, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply together the first and the last term. So that gives us negative 48. And now we're going to find two numbers that still add to our middle term here, but they're going to multiply to, I call this the rainbow number because it looks like a rainbow. Okay, so this is the deal. We don't just automatically, when we do factor by grouping, set up two sets of parentheses. Okay, so what you do with factor by grouping is you're going to bring down the first term. So I'm going to take this 6x squared and just bring it right down. And then you're going to bring down the last term. So I'm going to take this negative 8 and I'm just going to bring it right down. And we're going to take this middle term, right? We're going to take this 13x, and we're going to split it up into two separate terms. And how we find those terms is we come up with, like we said before, two numbers that multiply to negative 48 and add to positive 13. Now, you may need to do a little bit of trial and error with that. I'll just do this for the first one off to the side. So if we have negative 48, I'm going to list out all the factors that multiply to negative 48. So first of all, if, it, if it's going to add to a positive, it means the bigger number is going to be positive and the smaller number is going to be negative when we're multiplying. So we have a 1 and a 48. And since we want to have a negative 48, again, if it's going to add to a positive, it means our bigger number is positive. So we'll have a negative 1 and a positive 48. All right, negative 2 times 24 gives us 40, negative 48. Uh, negative 3 also divides evenly into it to give us 16. Negative 4 also divides evenly into it to give us 12. Negative 5 does not. Negative 6 does. Negative 6 times 8. Negative 7 doesn't. And then that brings us back to 8, which is already on our list, so that's how we know to stop. Now, if you look at these pairs of numbers, you could see right here, this is the pair that adds up to positive 13. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this middle term, and we're going to split it up into two separate terms. We're going to take these two numbers and attach this x right here to two of them. So we're going to have a negative 3x and a positive 16x. And the reason you're allowed to do this is because, think about it, if I took this expression and combined my like terms right here, if I combine these, wouldn't that just bring me back to the original expression? Okay, so now this is why it's called grouping. Now that we have an even set of numbers here, we can group together the first two and group together the last two. So when you group together the first two terms, you want to look and say, well, what is my greatest common factor? What could I factor out of these two terms? Well, I could pull out a 3 as well as an x. So I'm going to pull out a 3x, and when I do, I'm going to write in parentheses what I'm left with. So 6x squared divided by 3x is 2x. And then I'm going to bring down my subtraction sign. 3x divided by 3x is just 1, so it leaves me with 2x minus 1. All right, so then when you look at the second set of numbers here, here we could factor out a positive 8. So make sure you write not just 8, but plus 8. And then when you open up your parentheses, 16x divided by 8 is 2x. Bring down the minus sign, and 8 divided by 8 is 1. Okay, now from here, in order to create our factor, you want to take these two terms that are on the outside of the parentheses and group them together in one parentheses. So we'll have a 3x plus 8. And then you're going to take this common binomial here of 2x minus 1, and you're going to rewrite it only once in one set of parentheses. And the reason why we only write it once is because think about this. If you were to take this answer, this is our answer, by the way. I'm going to box it off. If you were to take this answer and multiply it out, double distribute, wouldn't you first take your 3x and distribute it to the 2x minus 1? which is exactly what's happening right there. And then next, wouldn't you take the 8 and distribute it to the 2x minus 1, which is exactly what's happening right here. So that's why, even though it's written out twice here, it's only because 
you know, we're going in the reverse order of double distributing. So technically, there's really only one 2x minus 1. Okay, so now you can skip to number 3 in your packet. So when we look at this, first thing you want to say to yourself is, can I factor out the greatest common factor? No, we can't. Okay, so there's a number other than 1 in front of our first term. So when that happens, we're going to have to use the grouping technique. So you're going to, again, multiply together the first and last term. So that would be negative 216. And we want to come up with two numbers that add to negative 6 and that multiply to negative 216. Okay, I'm going to do that in a minute, but first I want to remember, I don't automatically just set up two sets of parentheses. With factor by grouping, what I do is I bring down my first term. I'm going to leave a kind of big space. I'm going to bring down my last term. And we know we're going to have to split this middle term up into two terms that multiply to negative 216 and add to negative 6. So you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error, but once you do, you'll find out it becomes um, a negative 18 and a positive 12. So I'm going to write negative 18. Now this time, instead of writing negative 18x, we have an x squared on this middle term. So we're going to write negative 18x squared and then positive 12x squared. And just to remind you, the reason we're allowed to do this again is because if you took this expression and combined these like terms in the middle, it would just bring us back to our original problem. Okay, so anyway, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to group together the first two terms and group together the last two terms. So out of the first two terms, you could pull out a 2 and an x squared. And when you do, it's going to leave you with in parentheses 4x squared minus 9. Okay, out of the second set of parentheses, we can factor out a positive 3. So I'm going to write plus 3. And then when we do, that's going to leave us with 4x squared minus 9. Now with grouping, it's, it's always, you know, you always want, it's important to make sure that whatever this parenthesis says, this says the same. So if they don't, you either have to go back and find your mistake, or factor by grouping is not the correct method to use for that type of problem. Okay, so now if you recall, we take whatever's on the outside of the parentheses, and we're going to group them together in one set of parentheses. So we have a 2x squared plus 3. Then we're going to take our common binomial here, right? They have to say the same thing. And we're going to rewrite it, but only once. Okay, now in this question, we actually could take it a step further. You always want to look and say, can I factor further? Well, if you look at this parenthesis right here, this is a difference of two perfect squares, right? Difference because we have subtraction, and the square root of 4x squared is 2x, and the square root of 9 is 3. So we want to factor further. All right, we can't do anything with the 2x squared plus 3, so let's just bring that down. But under our second parenthesis, let's open up two sets of parentheses. And again, since the square root of 4x squared is 2x, we'll put that in the first spot in each parenthesis. Since the square root of 9 is 3, we'll put that in the second spot in each parenthesis. And then we, we make our signs addition and subtraction. So this right here is in factored form. All right, so let's take a look at one last one together, number four from your packet. So, again, first thing you want to say to yourself is, can I factor out a greatest common factor? Well, actually, yeah, in this case, we can. We could factor out, and you have to decide whether you want it to be positive or negative. I'm going to say negative because our leading term is a negative, but we could factor out a negative 2b. And when you do, it's going to leave you with positive 4b squared plus right, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive, 9b, and then again plus 2. Okay, so now when we look within our parentheses, we want to say, well, can I factor this further? It's a trinomial, and the leading coefficient is not a 1, so we're going to have to use the grouping technique. Okay, so let me first bring down the negative 2b. And I'm going to open up a parenthesis, right, because we have a parenthesis here. And now we want to come up with two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to 9. Okay, so it's going to add to 9 
and we'll try to eight. So this one's a little bit easier to come up with than the last one. Okay, so two numbers that multiply to eight and add to nine are eight and one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down our first term, so the four b squared. I like to leave a big space and bring down my last term. And then again, the two numbers that multiply to eight and add to nine are eight and one. And since there's a b here, we wanna attach a b to each of those. So we're gonna have a plus eight b and a plus one b, which you could just write as plus b. Okay, so let's bring down the negative two b, and I'm gonna open up a parenthesis, since we have a parenthesis here, and let's group and group. Okay, so out of the first group, we can factor out a 4b, and that would leave me with, in parentheses, b plus 2. Out of the second group, I mean, the only thing you could pull out of here is a 1, but you have to write that. So we have to write down, we're taking out a positive 1, so write plus 1. Okay, don't just put 1, you want to, you know, write plus 1. And when you do, it leaves you with, same thing, b plus 2. Okay, so now bring your negative 2b down. We can group together the 4b and the positive 1 into one parenthesis. And then we can rewrite this common binomial right here as our final factor. So this is in factored form.